yellow people and all the fanatics of electrical skateboarding and also DIYers and all the people who want to learn how to build an awesome and good quality electrical skateboard. If this is who you are, this channel is for you. Yes, it's now Wednesday again. Hopefully you was waiting for this uh, Wednesday and for the next video. Let me tell you what you will expect to see in this video. I'm going to share with you guys all the information that I've got in here about cells. What these are, different cells, and what are all the numbers do mean that are written on the cells. We will cover the basics of building the battery yourself, meaning the parallel and series connections. It's very important to understand this, guys, because you will then understand why it's so important to choose the correct cell for your board, for your application, for your design of the battery and also the battery enclosure. I'm also going to tell you what cell I've chosen for my new build and why I went for this particular cell. And finally, I'm going to tell you how to calculate how many cells you actually need to buy to build your battery. To some hardcore battery builders out there, this is going to be very simple. But to all the people who want to get into this and start building their batteries safely, you need to know the basics. And this is what this video is all about. By the way, this is the video 02. If you are interested, I will leave the link to the video 01 in the description below. Take a look. So first subject, guys. There are different types of cells, colors, sizes, and also most importantly, the actual uh, properties of the cells. So there are two main types. The ones with external cap, this look like a normal battery with protruding cap like this. This is not something you want. Even though these are still 18650, but this is not what normally being used for battery build purely because the surface of the cap is not big enough to actually sports weld the connections compared to for instance the flat top battery as you can see much bigger so when you choose your battery remember no external caps also very important guys there are fake batteries on the market so what you need to remember, it might look nice and fancy, it might have the writing on it that should match the original manufacturer's uh, writing, but internally will be something else, something you don't know what it is. So always buy from reliable source. Most popular batteries were and still are for uh, lithium-ion battery pack builds is Samsung 30 cues it's quite confusing guys and i get it when you go online there are tons of uh, different types of uh, batteries available out there i mean just looking at um, a website i mean you get the samsung 2096 35e lgm 36 panasonic uh you get so uh, uh Sanyos, you get uh, molecules i mean there is so many different things that you can find is unbelievable so what you need to uh, remember is every single cell got two most important characteristics one of them will be the actual capacity of the cell that means how much power it can store the higher the capacity the more range you will get on your board and this is normally written in the description of the batteries. You will not find it on actual battery. So you need to read up on the manufacturer's website, on resellers' uh, website, to see what the code actually means. For instance, the cell that I'm going to use for myself is P42A. This 42 stands for 4200 milliamp per cell and this is what you need to do you need to read up and see what the cell that you're about to buy actually 
can give you. The second very important characteristic is actually a draw or continuous maximum draw off of each cell. That means how many amps you can actually constantly draw out of the battery without overheating the battery and damaging it. It's very, very important. Remember this point. I will explain to you in a bit why it's so important. For instance, this battery right here, you look at it, 3000 milliamp, 35 amp. Awesome. This is for uh, vaping uh, machines. So they are quite expensive. Not worth buying a lot of them for the battery pack. But I just wanted to show you. But if you read a little tiny script at the bottom, it will tell you that actual continuous discharge is only 20 amp. So you have to be careful. Continuous discharge rate. This is what you want to know. So two things. Capacity in milliamps and also the actual continuous discharge rate. Remember this. So while we're here, guys, let me quickly show you the differences that you can find among the cells. So, for instance, Samsung 25Rs, 2500 milliamp, they are 20 amp discharge, and this is at the moment the price £3.79 per cell. You can find them. As I said, vape and battery, 3000 uh, milliamp at 20 amp discharge, but these are way too expensive. Very popular, Samsung at 30 Qs which are 3000 milliamp capacity with 15 amp continuous discharge or peak 20 amp discharge. I know a lot of people are using these cells and I'm using them as well on my other boards and I do, well, abuse them a little bit. I do discharge them or set them up as maximum discharge 20 amp because really and truly you will not be hitting your maximum amperage discharge on your board constantly. It'll be peaking when you either giving a lot of throttle or going uphill or you're stuck in the mud. So you need to consider that. But again, you should not be exceeding the recommendation of the manufacturer on the discharge because that will ruin your cell. If it ruins the cell, it will ruin the uh, back. So I will explain to you this in a bit. Uh, later, so uh, Samsung's right now you can roughly find for about four pounds to four, four pounds forty four. This is just on Folkstar, uh, and that's what the prices are at the moment. Uh, so next one up is a bit of a larger battery cell. So don't panic, I will explain. So you are looking at two uh, different size cells, okay? You probably know this, but I will explain. So this is the smaller one, or mostly used battery cell, is 18650. 18650 stands for 18 millimeter diameter and 650 millimeter, 65 millimeters, sorry guys, in length. There's a different size that is becoming really popular, slightly, slightly larger, as you can see. And this one here, is 21700 so it is 21 millimeters in diameter and it is 70 millimeters long a little bit of, a bit of difference there not massively but still you need to consider when you are uh, designing your battery pack the reason for uh, me going with the larger one and I will explain uh, much more about this uh, cell uh, in a little bit later in this video is because it gives you much more performance yeah and I can actually design my pack much better using a bigger cell I know it sounds a bit ridiculous but when I will explain you will understand so here we go so far we have learned there are different types of cells available on the market there are fake cells available so only buy from reputable companies there are two uh, main uh, characteristics is the actual capacity of the cell and also maximum safe discharge of the cell. Remember that. Also the sizes. But again, 18650 is something that people use the most and this is what you will most likely going to purchase for your build. 
So guys, next uh, subject. It's important to understand uh, two uh, principles uh, regarding connection of the battery cells. So one of them is parallel connection. This is where your batteries are connected this way, as you can see right now, where your positives are connected together and your negatives are connected together. That makes a P pack. So at the moment you're looking at four P. So this is exactly what it means when you hear things like, oh, I've got 12S 4P pack. So what it means is they've got four cells in parallel. When you connect cells in parallel, the characteristics of these cells are calculated as such as the discharge of each cell is multiplied by how many cells you've got in the P pack. Meaning, if we got 25 R Samsung uh, cells here, and each one is 25, uh, is it 25? 20 amp, 20 amp discharge. That means that your pack, in general, will have 80 amp discharge continuous. 20, 20, 20, and 20. And that's all your battery will give you. This is what I told you before. You need to know what you're buying, but before you buy, you need to design and think to yourself what actually you're going to achieve from your battery or what actually you want to achieve from your board. That means what motors you're going to use, what VESCs or ECs you're going to use. That means if you don't have enough amps to draw out of your battery continuously, you will not be able to use your motors in full capacity. Another thing to know is when you are connecting cells in parallel, not just the continuous amp discharge is getting multiplied by amount of cells in a P, but also the capacity. So, the more cells you've got in parallel, the more capacity you will have in your pack. So what you see in the front of you is Samsung 30 Qs. And Samsung 30 Qs are 15 amp discharge and 3000 milliamp each. So if you are building a 4P pack, you will have 3000 times 4 milliamps. So you will have 12,000 milliamp pack. 12,000 milliamp with 6374 motors, well, at least uh, in my application, gives you about 10 to 12 miles range. That's not bad. But that's in 12S uh, battery, battery pack. We'll talk about 12S, 10S in a second. So one more time. When you hear 4P, 5P, 6P packs, that only means how many cells are actually connected in parallel. Connecting cells in parallel increases your battery packs maximum constant discharge rate by multiplying single cell discharge rate by amount of cells in parallel. But at the same time, it does increase your battery packs capacity. So guys, I hope this makes sense, uh, what the P pack is and what happens to the, to the cells or the actual value of uh, voltages and uh, capacity when you are connecting your uh, cells in parallel. By the, way, by the way, your voltage does not change when you connect the cells in parallel, yeah? They're still gonna stay at 3.7 discharge or 4.2 uh, fully charged per cell. Remember that. Now, next right. step. Hopefully you did not fall asleep as yet. Um, I do apologize if this video is dragging on a bit, but I'm just trying to make sure that information is brought to you correctly and I cover everything possible. Please let me know in the comments below if uh, this video was okay so I can uh, use your comments and consider your comments for my next videos, which will be obviously about building a board, which will be more in detail of actually uh, welding together, soldering, whatever not. So. Uh, let's carry on. Next principle uh, is um, serious connections. So 
parallel, we got it now, yeah? You build your parallel pack to create a P, a P pack, uh, to your specification, meaning the discharge rating and also the uh, capacity of your battery. This capacity will not change unless you increase the P, yeah? So if it's 4P, it will be 4P, that's it. And this is gonna be your battery's maximum discharge and your battery's capacity. Now, series connection. Series connection, instead of being like this, where negatives and positives are being connected, like so, series connection is when you are connecting batteries like this, like a chain. Negative to positive, negative to positive, and so on, so on, so on. So this here is your series connection. So what are the difference between the parallel and series uh, connections? Just trying to make sure I connect them correctly. Okay. So if you have your cell that is 30 amp uh, continuous discharge, doesn't matter how many of them you put in series, it's still going to be a 30 amp discharge, okay? You will not increase capacity either. So if the cell is 4,200 milliamp, like this cells here, in series connections, the capacity stays the same. The only thing that does increase is the actual voltage. So if you have one battery that is 4.2 volt, you put next one in series, now you got yourself 8.4. Next one over, that's another 4.2 on the top of it. That's your uh, fully charged cell, okay? So by increasing amount of cells in series, you are increasing the voltage that you're going to get from this configuration. So one more time, parallel increases your capacity and in series you are increasing your voltage. So series connection, let's take a look at the quick diagram so maybe that will sink in a bit better. Take a look. Any uh, lithium ion pack is, or any other pack, is actually a configuration or result of different configuration between parallel and series connections that put together to your specification. So, if you have a 4P pack, so if you only have 4.2 volt, and this is not enough to run your skateboard, normally, well, they call it a golden, golden middle or the golden uh, battery, is 10S, and then people go for like 4P, 6P, 8P, 10P, 12P, whatever. You can make as many pieces as you want. The more P's in your pack, the more range you're gonna get. Simple as that. But obviously it's gonna be heavy. So this is where you have to think and design your own battery pack, which I'm going to cover right now. And as an example, I'm gonna use my new build. And I'm gonna tell you how I've done it. Maybe that will help. So what happens is in a normal, uh, battery pack. So you build your piece and then you connect the P packs in series. Uh, let me get it right. Then you connect them in series. So now you are increasing the voltage. So at the moment you're looking at 4P, 2S. So 4 in parallel, 2 in series. So in order to get 12S, we need 12 of these connected in series. And that's you're gonna be 12S 4P pack. I hope this uh, helps guys to understand these uh, weird numbers when you hear 10S 8P. So 10 in series and eight in parallel, okay? Simple as that. So just so you know, yeah, what voltages you get from different packs, yeah? It's quite simple, 4.2 by, uh, by the S. So the 8S pack will give you 28.8 fully charged, uh, the 10S 42 volt, and 12S will give you 50.4 volt. That might vary a little bit, 
uh, depending on your charger and the cutoff of your charger. By the way, we'll cover charges in the future videos. So this is this video is all about cells. So now let's take a look at uh, what I've done and how I'm going to design my uh, pack. That might help you a little bit. So guys, what we're looking at right now is um, just a design stage of any battery pack uh, slash enclosure. You need to consider obviously the rest of the electronics like your ECs, your switches. If you're gonna go for uh, lights, they need to uh, uh, remember uh, the um, uh, voltage uh, converter to 12 volt or 5 volt, whatever you're going to use. So if you wanna go for a, uh, a phone charger, which I will do in my board, and I'll cover that in future videos. So you need to remember the space for your electronics. Then you will end up with the space for your battery, which you should consider, okay? Then what you do, you have to start thinking backwards from your mortars, okay? So let me draw it up for you. So you got two mortars. For instance, you went for 63, 74 mortars, yeah? If you're interested about mortars, I got a video on my channel about mortars, so uh, yeah, you can take a look. So each mortar uh, will have its own maximum uh, amps, amperage that it ca they can run at safely. Manufacturer will tell you. So for instance, each mortar can maximum run at 65 amp. Yeah, never run them at 100%. I won't recommend that. So let's say 10% off. Let's say you will decide that you will run them at 60 amp uh, each mortar. Okay, that means that the VESCs will be demanding. And let's draw up a VESCs. VESCs will be demanding 60 amp each from your battery. And this is your battery right here. So all in total, your battery needs to be 120 amp safely discharge rated. So the battery should be able to take this amount of amps constant without uh, overheating or ruining the cells. By the way, it's Thursday and I think we're clapping to NHS, so I'll be right back. Okay guys, so we're back. Thank you NHS for all the hard work and condolences to all the families who lost uh, their loved ones. Uh, yeah. Well, let's get back. Uh, so guys, uh, as you can see, you work back away from your mortars. You work back away from your mortars, obviously making sure that your vests can take the same um, amps as well. And uh, then you end up with the amperage that you require from your battery. Now. If you know now that you need 120 amp uh, for your board to run the way you want it to run, and for instance, you will think, you know what, I will need to have a 4P uh, pack. What you need to remember, each cell has its own maximum discharge rate. And as we already discussed, let's say Samsung 30Qs, they only got 15 amp safe discharge and 20 amp peak discharge so if you would go for 4p this is your 15 times 4 so this is only 60 amp safe or 80 amp max peak discharge on a 4p pack so now what you need to do is actually increase this to achieve 120 so really and truly if you're using samsung 30 q's you need an 8p pack so that means 8 times 15 and that's your am i right so it's 80 yes that's your 120 amp people do use these cells and they do say use them as a 20 amp discharge that's fine and it looks like it's giving good results but you can look further and find a cell that will give you so if you are after 120 amp divided by four for instance because you can only fit four four p into your uh, battery enclosure that means you will require a cell that gives you 30 amp 
constant and safe. Okay, you get the principle? So if you got a massive uh, enclosure or if you have a, um, a deck mounted um, a box, you, you don't have to worry about uh, size. You can just whack as many pieces as you require for your application, for your maximum discharge and get on with it. In my instance, um, and by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, this enclosure here is by Big Ben. Take a look at my channel, got full review. It's, it's quite a good enclosure. So, in my instance, I don't have the uh, pleasure of extra space. Okay, I only have, I only have this distance right here. So I couldn't physically fit HP. cells or eight piece also 12 of them because i do need a 12s battery for my application so what i found and now let's talk about the cell that i'm using guys so what i did find for myself uh, are the uh 21700 moly cells these are as i described before a bit larger so 21 millimeters in diameter and 70 millimeters long but the beauty of these cells is these cells are for starters 4200 milliamp each compared to for instance samsung 30q which are 3000 so my four pack sorry my my 4p will give me four times 4200 this is 16800 milliamp so 60 let's let's round it up 16 amp hours that is really good that's exactly what i need that's probably going to give me about ooh, i would say 20 mile 15 to 20 mile depending on how you ride okay and that's plenty because after the first 10 miles or 12 miles my uh, rear leg goes numb so, and at the same time, each one of the cells can safely discharge a 30 amp each. So only 4P will already give me 4 times 320 amp constant discharge. So with that, I will be able to run two motors at 60 amp. But I'm not stopping there. I'm actually going to go for 5P. So the battery I'm building using these motor cells will be 12S 5P. So 50 volt and it's going to have 150 amp constant discharge capability. And look how small the P pack actually going to be compared to 8P with, with 18650s that will give me 120 you, you're with me there so choosing a cell gives you uh, a chance to manipulate the size of your pack and get exactly what you want from your battery pack now a little bit more about moly cells okay so besides having a good capacity besides having a really good uh, safe constant discharge uh, these at the moment are, I have a price here somewhere, I just looked up. One of these cells is £8.99. And you'll say, oh my god, that is expensive. Compared to a Samsung 30Q, which is £4.44, you can buy them uh, cheaper, you can find them cheaper. But, I found um, the place, and I would strongly recommend this place, it's called Fog Star. They sell as uh, battery cells, 18650s, 21700s, and they sell tons. Share a little secret with you. You can go on the website and actually go on to a uh, wholesale. And when you are placing a battery uh, order for a number of cells, let's say 50 plus or 100, the price drops. So I bought myself these cells at three pounds. 60 or three pounds 70 per cell a 
to me, that's no brainer. You cannot beat that. With this kind of uh, a performance of the cell for that money, that is like, wow, you know? I heard about the cells when they just were talking about them. That was quite a while ago. And um, me and my colleague, we bought a couple of these and we actually tested them. We stuck them on a special rig. We were discharging them at 20 amp constant, then 25, then 30, then 35. And we actually was able to discharge these cells at 40 amp, but they were getting warm. And uh, yeah, we've done 10 uh, cycles on it. We had like a little heater connected to a uh, uh, to the whole rig. And it was just discharging, charging, charging, discharging, and the cell held up. And that's when I said, that's exactly what I'm going to use. And the folks there, damn, I placed an order at 2 o'clock uh, a day, and I got the delivery next day at uh, about lunchtime. Bang, to my door. Simple as that. And it only cost me 8 quid. Not sure how much it's going to cost to uh, deliver to Europe or something, but I'm sure they do European uh, deliveries as well. So, guys, this is how they did come in in uh, nice boxes, uh, all individually, well I've chosen that by mistake, <laughs> all individually um, uh, wrapped up into a uh, nice little cases and yeah, that is so lovely, look at this, it's actually like a perfect a perfect uh, design for a uh, onboard um, uh, battery uh, case. spaces between them nice so next topic guys let's talk about how many cells do you need to buy I get a lot of questions on like personal PM and my email which by the way if you do have questions that's my email right there um, how many cells do I need Path. how do I calculate amount of cells so now let's take a look so if you have done your calculation right and uh, you've chosen a cell uh, that gives you enough uh, maximum discharge of the battery pack and now you know that you need a 4P battery. So you will have one, two, three, four. Four cells in one of the P packs. In order to make 12S battery, for instance, you went for 12S, you need 12 of them. So what you do is, that's your four cells in a P, times how many S's you're going to have, so how many, what voltage you want to have from your board, times 12. So that means is that in order to build the 4P 12S pack, you require, yes you're right, 48 cells in total. Okay? I hope this does make sense. Obviously I went for 12S 5P, so this is your 12 times 5, that's your 60 cells. And this is what I've got right here. Whew. So here we go guys. We now learned uh, the uh, parallel connections, we learned the series connections, now we learned the actual logic behind design in the pack, uh, where you are playing around with the configuration of series and parallel connections to achieve your capacity, which is range, to achieve your discharge, which is how fast you will be able to go and how much power can you uh, ask from your PCs and the motors, and also the voltage. That means how high of a voltage your system can run at. Hope you understood everything. Hope I wasn't too boring. Uh, a lot of people did say my videos can be long and they enjoy it. Some people don't like long videos. Guys, I cannot uh, make everyone happy. I believe that these kind of subjects should be long videos. Then everything could be explained. So that's it, guys. This is as simple as that. I really hope that you like the video, guys. I really hope you found uh, everything you was looking for. Uh, especially in the subject we just covered. I hope it gave you a bit of confidence and understanding of uh, a series parallel, uh, the numbers, the amount of cells you, can, you, need, you need to get, uh, the idea of uh, how complicated but at the same time um, rewarding 
and exciting uh, design and the battery build actually is. So in the next video guys, um, we're going to talk about all the materials and tools that you require to build a battery pack. I'll Don't forget to subscribe by hitting that green little circle there. Or is it there? I'm not quite sure actually. And also check out the previous video there or there. Not sure. Most importantly, stay safe, build safely, ride safely, and if not sure, ask. I'm here to help.